Welcome to this short video presentation. Uh, my name is Victor Snook. I am the Senior BIM Consultant at Address. Today I'll be looking at Autodesk Building Design Suite 2013 What's New, concentrating primarily on Revit 2013. The first enhancement I wish to talk about is the fact that Autodesk have combined all of the um, different Revit's, the Revit architecture, the Revit MEP and the Revit structures into one, uh, one desktop icon. Previously there would have been three separate desktop icons and you would have had to transfer from one package to another to be able to complete the entire building model. Now you can see, as you can see from the, the PowerPoint presentation, you now have architecture, structure and systems all as separate tabs within the one package. This gives you uh, all of the Revit vertical fun functionalities in one package, a single single customizable deployment. Okay, so if any people out there deploying the software, you can pick and choose what each individual user can see as their deployment at the point you actually create it. There is a single content library, so when you browse to your doors, your windows, your plumbing fixtures, there's one library available for all of the three different applications and it's a multi-discipline workflow improvements. So instead of having to transfer from different to different um, packages, it's all in one. Okay, if we have a quick look at that now, I'm just gonna flick over to Revit. Okay, the biggest difference you're gonna find with Revit 2013 is you now get the architecture, the structure, and the systems tab all in one package. Okay, you do have the ability to be able to configure what uh, particular icons and ribbons are shown in each of the Revit applications. So if you go to um, the application menu, I'm going to go to options. On the user interface tab, you can see from here, all of my different tabs are actually listed out. If I untick one of my tabs and click OK, that will actually remove that tab from the ribbon. So you can configure individually each person's Revit or you can actually do it as part of a deployment and distribute the deployment to your different users. The next change they've done uh, in Revit 2013 is uh, the ability to be able to do um, suite workflows. Okay, For anybody who's installed uh, either Revit as part of the premium suite or the ultimate suite, what you'll realize quite quickly is the fact that you've got a series of icons on your desktop. So within the suite, you get a, an array of different products that you can use. What the suite work, workflows will do is they allow you to go from Revit to quickly go to other packages within a predetermined template. Okay, And as you can see from uh, the short... Um, small little drop down list here okay the ones that you've actually got predetermined in here is the, under the workflows you've got a series of predetermined templates for 3d studio max and you've also got some predetermined templates for showcase okay for all of those not familiar with the product 3d studio max will allow you to do photorealistic renders and photorealistic walkthroughs of your revit model Showcase is a little is more of an interactive um, presentation tool where you can actually create realistic presentational representations of the model, including materials, uh, reflections, and shadows, and you can actually walk around the model. Okay, you can also within Showcase put a have a series of design options, including colors. Uh, so you can quickly flick from one option to another. It's a great way of actually showing clients what options are available within colour schemes and things like that. Okay, just to show you where these are on the new Revit, if you go to the application menu, they are just under here. So, um, suite workflows. I get my suite workflow manager. So this shows me all of the templates and stuff that I've got predetermined. And any of the templates, I can go and click on the settings button. This will show you all of the settings that it's going to use when it exports out to the application that you've selected. Okay. Um, and you can also run from here as well. So to actually pass it out to a separate package, I can go to Suite Workflows. I can select 
the template that I wish to use, I can do for showcase, a conceptual model, an interactive walkthrough or a realistic presentation. All I would do then is click on that. It brings up the template with all its settings and all I would do is click run. It will then fire up showcase or 3D Studio Max using the template that I've selected um, and then you can start using that product, which is quite a nice new feature. Again, it's another way of making life a little bit easier when you come to um, use the other products. Okay. Next enhancement, this is uh, visualization enhancements, what they've added to it. So there's some new things and there's also some enhancements. Okay. Right, we've got interactive ray tracing of views, and I'll show you that in a second. Artificial lights and entourage in realistic views. Okay, so now with the realistic view, not only do you get materials that were available in realistic view for 2012, what you also get now is you get RPC content like people and also plant it, plant foliage and stuff within um, the realistic view. I can apply sky backgrounds in all visual settings, so now the conceptual views are a lot more realistic because you can apply different um, gradient, gradient backgrounds and also sky backgrounds. Uh, full transparency control. This has changed from 20, 2012. Um, now you have control over the transparency, so you can actually select using a slider bar what transparency levels you want to use. Okay, so have a look at let's have a look at some of the visualization enhancements. If I go to Revit, okay, this view you've seen a couple of times on my our previous um, looking at the previous settings. Right, with this one, okay, this is. Uh, the realistic view which is available in 2012. With the realistic view now you can see that automatically I've started to see my RPC people and I also get uh, the actual lights that I've placed on the model. So this is giving you quite a pleasing night shot of a particular building. What it's also quite useful for as well is to be able to work out whether the lighting that you've applied to the model is accurate in the right place before you actually go to render. If I want to go to a, uh, a day shot, I'm just going to transfer to a different view. Okay, so this is uh, a day shot of the model. Okay, and as you can see from this, I can apply uh, a nice background to it. I get all of the photorealistic materials as you got previously, but I now get RPC people and RPC plants available on the photo the photorealistic um, view. Okay, this is actually quite useful for just as a presentational tool without me having to render I get a nice pleasing view of the model which I can show to clients. The next one we've actually got this is um, real-time rendering. Okay, So the real-time rendering is now available under the graphics display options so it's at the bottom. It's a thing called ray tracing. What this will actually do is when I turn on the ray tracing, what Revit will actually do is it will start to calculate without me having to render the file out to either the uh, the render engine within Revit or to the cloud. It will go and it will start calculating and it will do a series of passes. And you can see it's starting to render it, apply materials and shadows. And this gives you the ability to do this without actually having to pass it out to render with Max or a different uh, a different tool. As you actually uh, leave the in interactive ray tracing, what it will do is it will do a series of passes and the quality will improve each pass. Okay, When you get the quality that you like, okay, what I can do is I can actually go and save the file. So I'm going to say I want to save this snapshot because I'm going to show it to the client. So if I click on save, I can actually save the, uh, the view. Okay. The views themselves are now shared, are now saved on the under renderings under the brow, under the project browser. So if I double click on the project browser, okay, there we are. So that's the rendering as a snapshot. Again, what's quite nice as well is the fact that if I wanted to do a different view of the realistic ray tracing, all I would have to do is turn on realistic ray tracing again. Okay, when it actually starts up, it's just going to start processing in just a second. Okay, to get a different view, all I can do is actually get a, a different view of the model. 
and if you leave it for a second, get the view you want. And again, if you leave it, leave it for a second, it will start processing it. And the longer, the longer you leave it, the better the uh, the quality will be. So this is a great addition to Revit because it allows you to do some uh, nice realistic views without the having to process it through rendering on the cloud or um, in Revit itself. So it's a great little tool. Okay, thank you for watching this short presentation. If you um, require any help with what you've seen, any additional information, please go to the our YouTube site where these videos will be posted. You can go to address.co.uk or you can ring the number on the screen and we'll be more than willing to help you. Thank you very much.